EVGA provides some great tools for performance tuning the GTX 660. First up, of course, is EVGA's Precision X Control Center. Uh, really a simply laid out, nice to use piece of software, but very, very powerful. Taking a look, you've got a gauge across the top, which is gonna show your current GPU speed uh, in real time. GPU clock also displayed, as well as the voltage right across here. There's also a boost clock, which you can see here, and base clock. There are two dials to let you know where you are set. Going down below, you see the power target, GPU clock offset, and memory clock offset sliders, which will be used for tuning it. Up top also, you're going to get a real-time readout of the temperature of your GPU, as well as the fan speed. You can take the fan from auto to um, manual fan control and set the fan to wherever you like or let it work automatically off the temperature of the unit. You can also adjust the fan curve to your liking. So keeping it cooler, quieter, and adjusting the curve to whatever is going to suit your particular needs. Moving down, voltage adjustment is available, comes off as a sidebar slider up and down. Monitoring is available for power, GPU clock, memory clock, GPU temp, GPU usage, memory usage, GPU voltage, and fan speed. And see that down the bottom, you can actually get performance log in real time on your power percentage, GPU clock, memory clock, and it can also be logged at any time and referred to later. Down the bottom also, you can go with a frame rate target. Uh, if you enable your frame rate target and you're looking to get 80 frames out of your game but really don't need to go over, keep it a little cooler, set your frame rate target and that's exactly where you're going to stay can be set anywhere from 25 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. Profiles are available, 10 profiles. Uh, whenever you do a performance tuning, you can save it to a profile and it's as easy as one click to get it back, hit apply. So we've got one profile saved. This was the maximum overclock for this card and we'll get to that in just a second. Let's get it back to default. Now, you see over here, test button. This is kind of an interesting piece. Uh, along with Precision X, EVGA also has the OC scanner, which is used in conjunction. Taking a look at the OC scanner, it is real-time monitoring, as well as four stress tests, three for um, GPU, one furry, one TESI, one combina uh, combination, and a CPU burner, uh, which is a CPU stress test. You also have a benchmark using Ferry, Tessie, or a combination. And your results of the benchmark will be laid out right here. NVZ, very similar to CPU or a GPU Z, gives you your model GPU, all your information on your card, real-time GPU clock, memory clock, voltage. GPU power, target power, and down here in a bar graph. So let's take a look at how we'll get to actually performance tuning the card itself. First off, we're at stock, power target 100%, no offset on the GPU or the memory clock. First, we'll start, we're going to take our GPU clock and give it a bit of an offset. Let's try bumping it up, say, 30 megahertz. And maybe let's go uh, 50 megahertz up on the memory. Naturally, you're going to get significantly more performance out of boosting the GPU clock than you are out of the memory. Uh, memory, uh, I've always found to be an afterthought. Get your GPU clock as high as you can. If you then want to play with the memory, play with it from there. But the gains are much more pronounced in a GPU clock offset than a memory clock offset. They're almost non-existent in the memory clock offset. So let's apply it. Now, we've bumped up our GPU clock, we've bumped up our memory clock. Taking a look over here, we can just simply select our test. Uh, let's go the um, combination, and let's see, will this overclock fly? Hit the test button, 
and up our test screen comes as you can see our GPU clock is ramped up voltage is ramped up while the test is in order now across the top you're going to get your frames per second GPU temperature GPU load and right here artifacting if there's an artifact it's going to let you know. Right now, zero artifacts. So obviously the speed is not a problem in any way, shape, or form. We'll stop the test. And if we want to disable the scanner for artifacts, try the test again, you'll see the test actually runs in full motion. rather than what appears to be static. Now you do have options for the testing itself. You can select the background image in fur color, display the true clock speeds, you can play an alarm when a value becomes out of range. Um, artifact scanner polling period. Stop the stress test. If artifacts exceed a number of artifacts, we have it set to one, which is what it comes out of the box at. So it's going to stop the test if you get an artifact period. Enable stress test max duration. So you can set the length of your text, uh, test. You can enable FX anti-aliasing on the TESI or dynamic blacking on the uh, furry. You can select your screenshot uh, folder and always take a screenshot. Adjust the size of the test. On screen display on or off. Max GPU temp. GPU load limiter, which only works on the G uh, GTX 500 series. And extra rendering delay. So, very nice tool to have on hand. So, let's take a look at actually getting the uh, GTX 660 bumped up a bit. Uh, so I have actually been playing with it and working with it and simply taking the GPU clock offset up about 10 megahertz at a time and when I hit actually 80 megahertz I was getting through EVGA stress test without a problem However, when I went into Unigen and ran that, I was getting artifacting. I was also getting some stuttering. So therefore, I backed it down slowly. 78, artifacting, stuttering, went away. So I had a max boost clock of 1178. But as you know, with the power target turned up to 100%, which is where we took it, um, I was actually getting GPU clocks of about 1202. So you definitely get a good dynamic boost, uh, just like NVIDIA promises from the GTX 660 up through the GTX 690. So after I was settled on the 78 megahertz uh, boost with the 110% power target, as being the max I was going to get without artifacting in Unigen, um, as I say, that was the only test that started getting artifacting, but it is probably the most stressful test you're going to put the PC th or put the GPU through. So we're going to take 78 as our max. I then started bumping up the memory clock. As I say, diminishing returns on the memory clock as far as performance versus artifacting. But I was able to slowly bump up, retest, bump up, retest, and actually got the memory clock up to 180 uh, megahertz up without a problem before we started seeing any artifacting, any stuttering, or anything else. Uh, so wound up with a final overclock of 110% power target, you, or I should say using the 110% power target, wound up with an increase of 78 megahertz on the GPU, which is fantastic for an overclocked card. So we actually wound up with uh, an increase on the boost clock to 1188 megahertz regularly going over 1200 megahertz uh, during actual performance and a memory clock boost of 180 megahertz. To make life simple, I stored it right into a profile. So if I start up at default, 
want to recall those settings, simply hit the profile button, they're right back, apply them, and my overclock is right there, my max overclock. Uh, maximum temp we did see during that uh, overclock during testing was about 83 degrees. Uh, you do need to keep an eye on the GPU temperature. It is an overclocked card. It does run a little bit hot. Uh, it does also use the reference cooling solution, so you really need to keep an eye on it. Uh, fan noise will also get up there a little bit, so you will need to uh, keep an eye on your temperature. But you can, of course, again, adjust your fan curve as you like to make sure that you're getting the cooling that you are looking for as well as uh, the silence you're hoping to achieve. So at the end of the day, EVGA GTX 660 got a nice overclock, 78 megahertz on the GPU, 180 megahertz on the RAM. Really nice tools to use uh, during the overclock procedure as well as you know stress testing and also benchmarking to compare the results of your stock and your different overclocks.